Hello class and welcome to section 7.6 which is about factoring polynomials in the form of ax squared plus bx plus c. By the end of today's lesson you will be able to factor trinomials that have a leaning coefficient using a strategy we're going to call the box method. Um, so in the last lesson we talked about how to factor something that looked like x squared plus 6x plus 8 where it was just x squared in the front. That means our leading coefficient was just 1. Now we're going to talk about a strategy for how we can factor these trinomials if the leading coefficient is something other than 1. So the first step of this is going to be to, again, find some factors. So when we had this x squared plus 6x plus 8 problem, we found the factors of 8. What we were really doing is finding the factors of 1 times 8. So now that we have a leading coefficient other than um, 1, we have this 2, we have to account for that when we're finding our factors. So your first step in this process is going to be to take your front number, your a value, and multiply it by the c value. So your first job is 2 times 24, which in this case is equal to 48. Then you would find the factors of that number. So I would go with 1 and 48, 2 and 24, 3 and 16, 4 and 12, 6 and 8. So those are all of the things that multiply to 48, which again we got from doing 2 times 24. Now again, once we do our factors, we need it to add up to that middle value. So we're looking for the factors that would sum to 19. So in this case, our factor pair that would work would be 3 and 16, because that adds to 19 and um, multiplies to 48. So it's the same kind of idea. Our first step is the same idea. We just have to combine the A and the C term. Go ahead and try to find the factors of this one on your own. Multiply 10 and 4 and you get 40. The factors that are going to get you to negative 13 are going to be a negative 5 and a negative 8. So now that we know how to find those factors, let's talk about how we can use the box method to actually solve the problem. So the initial step on this problem would be to take 7 times 4. And I'm going to do this off to the side. So I'm looking for factors of 28. So 1 and 28, 2 and 14 and 4 and 7. We're looking for a pair that can get us to a positive 29. So the factors I'm going to use are 1 and 28. Now, you have the option to do this part, this last part where you write out the factors. You can either write them out or you can skip that step and just put them into the box that we're going to start using. This box method requires you to draw a 2 by 2 box into the first position is always going to be that first term. So in this case, I've got 7x squared. And into this bottom position down here, I'm going to put that c term, that last number. The first term always goes in the top left. The last term always goes in the bottom right. Now, the 29x is going to get split up between these two boxes. That's where this factor pair comes in. I'm going to say 1x and 28x. So what that does is it takes our 29 and it breaks it into two, the other two remaining boxes. Now, once you factor this, you're going to go through and you're going to say, okay, I've got 7x squared and I've got 1x. What do they have in common? The answer is x. Once I have an x, I'm going to say, okay, how did I get from x to 7x squared? Well, I need an x, or excuse me, a 7, and I need a second x because x times 7x is going to give me 7x squared. Then how did I get from x to 1x? Well, I need a 1. So that takes care of the common factor and then how we pull it out. The next thing I'm going to do is come over to the next part and I'm going to say, okay, how did I get from 7x to 28x? The answer is multiply by 4. Then I'm going to double check and say 1 times 4 is 4. So my two factors here end up being x plus 4, and 7x plus 1. That's how I'm able to factor it out. 
Now you may be wondering, does it matter if I switch where the 1 and the 28x goes? So again, 7x is in the top left and 4 is in the bottom right. If I flip-flop where the 1 and the 28 are, so I put the 28x here and the 1x here, I'm going to still go through and I'm going to say, okay, I'm going to factor and I'm going to pull out now, in this case, between 7x squared and 28x squared, they can both be divided by 7, and they both have an x. So now to get from 7x to 7x squared, I'm missing an x. And to get from 7x to 28x, I'm missing a multiply by 4. Now to get from x to 1x, I need a 1, and I double check 4 times 1 is indeed 4. So we end up with the same factor pairs, just with a change of position. So it changed what was on the top factor and what was on that left side factor. So it does not matter what order you plug those in as long as you are figuring out the pair that multiplies to the outside numbers and adds to the inside numbers. Go ahead and try this one on your own. So we're trying to multiply to negative 20 and add to negative 1. When we get that, our factor pair is going to be 4 and negative 5. So we plug that information into our box, pull out the common factors, I end up with 2q minus 5 and q plus 2. Another thing we want to look at, when you are looking at these um, trinomials, you might notice right here that all of these are divisible by 5. You could start this problem by saying 10 times 30 and then finding the factors of 300. That would be large and rather tedious. If you look at the numbers and you notice they're all divisible, start by pulling out that factor. So I can divide them all by 5, and I can say I have a 2d squared minus 7d plus 6. Now for a minute, we're going to just ignore this 5, and we're going to say, okay, my factors now, I'm going to look for the factors of 2 times 6, aka 12. So I've got 1 and 12, 2 and 6, 3 and 4. The pair that's going to get me to negative 7 is going to be a negative 3 and a negative 4. So I'm going to go ahead, draw my box. My first term always goes in the top left, so I'm going to use the 2d squared from this after we pulled out the 5, and then the 6 as that back term. Then I'm going to put in my factors of negative 3d and negative 4d, splitting up that negative 7 into the two remaining boxes. And then I'm going to go ahead and pull out what matches. Between 2d squared and d, the only thing they have in common is going to be d. To get from d to 2d squared, I need a 2 and another d. To get from d to negative 3d, I need to multiply by negative 3. To get from 2 to negative 4, we need a negative 2. And then we double check, negative 3 times negative 2 is positive 6. So my answer is going to be 2d minus 3 and then d minus 2. The most common mistake people make is they forget that they pulled out a 5 at the beginning. When you pull out a 5 at the beginning, that factor needs to be included as part of your factored form. So what you pull out could be a number, it could be a variable, it could be a number and a variable, but whatever you factor out, whatever you can divide by at the beginning, that needs to go back in front as part of the answer. Go ahead and try this one on your own. Factor out the 2 to start, go through, we need the factors of 12, we're going to figure out which ones add to 11, and there should be a P in that equation right there. And once we factor that all out, we get the answer at the bottom, making sure you put that 2 back inside of there. Another thing we're going to talk about is what happens when we have more than one variable. So in this case, we have an x and a y. The process still starts the same. Can't divide everything by the same number, so I'm going to go ahead and say 4 times 15. So I need the factors of 60. So that's going to be 1 and 60, 2 and 30, 3 and 20, 4 and 15, 5 and 12, 6 and 10. 
So now from those factors, I need something that can get me to negative 17. One thing I want to point out is it's important to list all of the factors because as you're going to notice in this one, there's two pairs that could get me to 17. 20, or excuse me, 3 minus 20 or negative 5 minus 12. So how do I decide which one I'm going to use? In this case, when we were multiplying, it's a 4 times, and I should have written this more carefully, but it was 4 times a negative 15. So I'm looking for an answer that's negative 60. If I put a negative in front of the 5 and the 12, negative 5 times negative 12 is going to give me a positive 60. If I do 3 minus 20, that's going to give me a negative 17 and a negative 60. So this is the factor pair that I'm going to use. Now I'm going to go ahead and draw that box. In the top left corner, we have our initial factor, or excuse me, initial term of 4x squared. And our back term is negative 15y squared. And then just like the other problems, when we plug into this box, we're going to use our factor. So I've got 3, and in this case, it's going to be 3xy, and then negative 20xy. So you just include both of those variables in the chart, or in the box. The box itself does not change. It's just a matter of including those variables. So now, as I am factoring, I'm looking, and I'm saying, what can I pull out of both of these? The only thing in common between 4x squared and 3x is an x. So I'm going to pull out the x. And I'm going to say from x, how do I get to 4x squared? I need a 4 and another x. From x, how do I get to 3xy? I need a 3 and I need a y. Now I'm going to take the term that I've got. How did I get from 4x to negative 20xy? I'm going to need a negative 5 and I'm going to need a y. And then I'm going to double check, 3y times negative 5y does indeed give me negative 15y. So my factors are going to be 4x plus 3y being multiplied by x minus 5y. Go ahead and try this next one on your own. Multiply, we need the factors of positive 70. Um, we're going to use 5 and 14 to get to 19, split it up into the box, and we end up with our final answer. The last thing I want to talk to you about is a couple of different scenarios where we're not going to end up with those two binomials being multiplied. So for here, we're going to start with 4 times 7, which we've already talked about is 28, and our factors are 1 and 28, 2 and 14, 4 and 7. In front of here, we've got a negative 1. None of these factor pairs um, can get us to negative 1. So this is called a prime trinomial. This is something we can't factor. So just like 7 is a prime number, a factor or a trinomial where this doesn't work for our factor pair is also called prime. You may also hear it referred to as being unfactorable. So those two words are synonyms for each other. The other scenario that you might run across, looking at 14a squared plus 35a minus 56, is that you can start this problem noticing 14, 35, and 56 can all be divided by 7. So I'm going to have 7, and then I'm going to have 2a squared plus 5a minus 8. I'm going to go ahead and find my factors of 2 times 8, which is going to be 1 and 16, 2 and 8, 4 and 4. Again, none of these are going to, none of these pairs add up to that middle term of 5. This trinomial is not called prime. The factored form is then right here. As long as you can do something to the problem, we consider it factorable. So since you could pull the 7 out, this problem would be in factored form, this answer right here. It doesn't break into the two binomial pairs, but you can pull something out, so it is factorable. 
If you have questions about this or anything else from the lesson, please let me know when you get to class.